What's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with Some Men's Comics, and we are back with another top 10 back issues for you to be on the lookout for. As we always say, each week we give you 10 issues, but you can add it to one master list from all these videos to be on the lookout for any of these at any given time at your local comic book store, right, Jack? That's right. No hot books this week that aren't going to be talked about next week. No books this week that are still going to be on the list next week. We're talking about 10 new picks of books that we think are going to be spiking in the coming future. Yeah, I mean, really, we could have a top 1,000 list of how many of these have because these are always relevant and they always make a good addition to your collection. But we're starting with pick number 10 right now. And then coming in at the bottom on the list at number 10 this week, we get that Spider-Man number one. Yeah, this is a book to pay attention to. Now, we've talked about this with previous lists, but if you're new to watching this show, something to note is we write these lists weeks and weeks in advance. So this was a book that really we were highlighting it before the Miles explosion really hit. And this book certainly got a lot of attention. But as you mentioned, attention tends to wane in the comics industry. So people will move on and they'll start looking at other books. And when they do, and this book drops down. This is one to pay attention to first meeting of Miles and Peter Parker, although very briefly, and a lot of people also like number two, where you get kind of that full meeting and understanding of who they are. You know that our take on this channel, grab them both. Why not? Put them together as a set. Uh, it certainly will sell better in the future. And you've got your uh, bet kind of hedged right there. But either way, I think this is a great book. The variants for this are great. Uh, and I think that everything Miles is going to be hot. And eventually we're going to see Tom Howell and Peter Parker meet up with Miles Morales. I'm convinced of it. So inevitably when that happens, this will be the talked about book. Hitting us at number nine this week, we get some great reprints again. And we're talking about Marvel Tales number 106 and number 209. Yeah, now we've talked about ASM 129 and the mega key that it is. And the fact that the Punisher is one of the most cult popular characters in all of comics. But... We've recently had a lot of news in the comics community of some heat behind some reprints for that original ASM 129. These reprints went to astronomical prices. There was some talk about fraud on eBay and so on and so forth. Comic Tom 101 on his channel did a really good job of covering that topic. But you look at that and then you look at this. This is a whole different thing. These are two legitimate Marvel releases, Marvel Tales series, different covers. Two complete change-ups of the cover. One more of a color change, one a total cover change. And you get the first appearance of the Punisher right there in the story. These are books that we talked about this trend with Marvel Tales. These are just ignored and forgotten about books. And I really think that as more people are aware that these books exist, with the prices that are currently being paid for reprints, action figure comics, you know, those comics that come in the action figure pack, as well as the facsimile editions that are coming out today, it really makes sense that these books, which are more limited because they're tougher to find in good condition, and they've been sitting in dollar bins for so long, would be more desirable and have a lot of room to grow. And as the Punisher grows and as people become more aware, I think these two will grow. Yeah, it always surprises me that people like, you know, you get excited if there's like a loot crate variant that reprints it and people get excited, but you don't hear them talking about these as much. And I like these type books. I've gone at you before a couple of times when you're talking about like the ads and books. I love these because it reprints the whole actual story mm -hmm. and you can get it for a song compared to what those actual yeah. experiences going for. And you never know. We talk about long-term plays all the time. These are great ones to pick up cheap, throw them in a long box. And as that popular popularity gains and the prices for that actual first appearance goes up, this is a great one to have in your collection. Coming at the eight spot this week, we get Spectacular Spider-Man number one. This is one book. When I first got back into comics, I was trying to look for alternatives for mega keys that I couldn't afford. I like this one because it was a chance for me to pick up a Spider-Man number one for the very affordable price. Yes, it came out in that age when there's a lot of printed, but we always know that doesn't really mean the whole thing. Yeah, I could just sit back, Brian. I don't have to say much because you honestly said it all. The fact is, this book is on this list for the exact logic that you as a comic buyer 
implored. I really think that that's something that more and more people are going to do, specifically when it comes to Spider-Man. You're out of reach with a Spider-Man 1. You're out of reach with an Amazing Fantasy 15. That's everybody's kind of mega grail. But to many of us, you'll never reach it. And so you look for these other books that can kind of give you that feeling. Spectacular Spider-Man, are those are a name and a word that go together and have always kind of fit as much as, almost as much at least as Amazing Spider-Man has. So I look at this book and say, this is a great alternative key, a great book to pay attention to. Print runs be damned. And again, it also comes down to condition. But here's the thing, Brian, and you always got to pay attention to this. We are one movie being titled The Spectacular Spider-Man away from this book being one of the most desirable books in the hobby. And you can just never rule out those things or predict when they can happen. Yeah, and that's more news now. Pick it up now before it ends up on those top 10, hot 10 lists later on when it spiked. Yes. Coming in next on the list this week, we get that Uncanny X-Men number 282. This is a book that kind of took off a little bit during a couple of those X-Men movies when they rumored that Bishop was going to be in there, but we saw how that played out. So you often hear right now people talk about Bishop and they have that bad taste in their mouth. But Jack, you always remind people, hey, not so fast, right? Right. And you want to talk about books with a high print run. Whew, we're talking about one here. But the, I like to look at trends of popularity, and I really think that they're duplicatable. So you mentioned that, that this book got popular when Bishop was to show up in the X-Men film. Now, look, we can immediately start talking about how terrible that appearance was or the casting or how the character looked or his role in the movie. Certainly, we <laughs> Or the five-minute role. <laughs> right. We can talk about all of that. But Think about the lead up to that. If you weren't in comics at that time, just to give you kind of the, the, the 411 on that situation, he was kind of the hot character of that movie. And because of that, I think that that can happen again. Fast forward to today, it's kind of the book when people talk about undervalued X-Men keys that all of the newer co collectors and speculators who you see on Instagram and YouTube, they tend to bring up. So it's the one that I think will repeat what happened in the original X-Men film with the new MCU, but in 5G We Trust, I believe deliver a I think that he's essential to the diversity of the X-Men, which are already a story of diversity and inclusion. So I think that definitely this is a character that's got some legs. Look out for that first print, look out for that second print. And then coming midway at the list at number six, we get that DC greatness with Commandi number one. Yeah, now this is an interesting story. You're talking about a book that is kind of a ripoff of Planet of the Apes a bit. Um, it was DC Comics kind of take on that. But it's it's got art by the great Jack King Kirby. So this is a book that has kind of always been cult popular. You've always seen, especially Commodity Number 1 has always kind of been a book that the old school comic heads wanted in their collection. But what we have not seen is the new school comic collectors jumping on board with this property. And there are two things that really stuck out to me. Number one, when they redid a commodity series from DC Comics, it got solid reader buzz, and it had these really cool variants by none other than Kevin Eastman, who grew up a huge commodity fan. But on top of that, Think about where we're going with HBO Max, and I've brought this up several times on several programs on the Civil Men's Comics YouTube channel, that with the Joker movie, it changed everything. DC can now play on properties that they've never touched on. They can go outside of their typical universe, and with HBO Max and Bad Robot, they have a platform to do kind of some out there properties. I would not be surprised to see a commanding movie on HBO at all. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be a movie. Like you said, it could be a show. They have, they have mm -hmm. definitely different avenues. Or who knows, they might do some type of anthology show and you could get like a 10-minute freaking mini film and you never know. And it's just a great book to have in your collection. Just like you said, Jack Kirby goodness. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's one of those classic keys. And I think it's a blue chipper that you just never know about. And it's just cheap enough to make it a great buy. Then coming at number five, we get back to some Star Wars goodness. And we're talking about that Star Wars Poe Dameron number two. This actually has a pretty good first appearance in it, right? That's right. I've been talking about this book for a long time. There's a 1 in 25 Declan Shelby variant. Cover A is an absolute dollar bin fodder. I have picked these books up for years. But this is the first appearance of Captain Phasma. Now, I know a lot of people 
they're split. Some people love the new story. Some people not so much. Give me the OG Star Wars. I get it. I totally do. But the reality is with what we've seen with Disney Plus and the heat behind Mandalorian and the fact that they want to explore new realms, we could absolutely see them delve deeper into some of these newer characters that have introduced into the Star Wars universe, whether or not it's on their own solo movie or th- th- their own television show or being featured in a television show. I think prequel things, you just can't rule anything out. Captain Phasma was this character that did a lot of merchandise sales. You saw the character all over Target, all over Walmart, all over everywhere toys were sold at Christmas time when that movie came out. And it was a character that got a lot of female Star Wars fans excited being this like female boss stormtrooper. But we never really got any sort of story on her. There didn't really delve into much. And I have to believe that that may be by design. There may be something in the works in the future. So the point of this show is, again, we're not reacting to what's hot yesterday. We're not talking to you about Clone Wars number one. We're talking about the next book like that, and we're looking at Poe Dameron number two as a book that certainly has that possibility. Yeah, and I mean, this could be, I always look at it as, hey, what our generation and the newer generation, I see this also like this new generation could be their Boba Fett as far as we know. Absolutely. And hitting the list at number four this week, we get another trifecta for you. We've talked about this on previous videos, but we're hitting it in this top 10 back issue list and we're talking about ninja turtle that current idw run we're talking about issues number 101 102 and 105 yeah we may have talked about this on other programming but we needed to bring it here to the list because again this is a growing list these are books to be paying attention to and these are books right here that while they may be graphic breaking books for brian who's got to try to fit all three of these on that graphic at the same point i think they are future profit makers for you guys out there in the Sickleman's Comics YouTube family because a lot is going on in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Major websites like Newsarama and CBR are reporting it. The speculation community who tends to drive these secondary market sales, they're not talking about it. So you get the opportunity to make some great buys. Now, certainly prices have gone up since we've started talking about it on the channel, but we're going to keep talking about it and eventually others will too, but those prices are still absolutely low compared to what's going on in these issues. So you say, Jack, why are we talking about these three issues? Well, everybody knows in 101, the first appearance of Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa is a character that's shown up in the animated series. It's certainly a character that's been popular, but that's a bit of a false flag sort of a situation. That's what everybody thinks is the reason why these are hot, not what to pay attention to. 101 is also the first appearance of a character named Lita, a tiny albino turtle. 102 is the first appearance of three more mutants, Kina, Kana, and Mushroom, as well as 105 being the issue where Lita, Kina, Kana, and Mushroom are adopted by the Ninja Turtles, similar to the way Splinter adopted them. A longtime rival of Raphael becomes a new love interest in Alapex, and she joins the team as the sixth member, just like Jenica did, getting her own bandana All in one issue with that issue 105, she is now the green representative and the green bandana wearer of the team. And they get a new name. They are no longer the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They are the Splinter Clan. And they are setting up a future for this franchise as we also get a little flash forward panel that shows Lita grown up looking a lot like her adoptive parents wearing that full kind of TMNT gear. So I'm really excited about these three issues. TMNT is a property that's never going away. It's generational. We grew up on it. Our children are now growing up on it. I think our children's children are going to grow up on it. So this is something to be paying attention to. Yeah, it's funny that flash that flash forward panel you're talking about. I look at her like she's I came to chew some bubble gum and kick some ass. No, I'm almost out of bubble gum. But a little Roddy Piper. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, great issues. We talked about it a couple times, and it's kind of like that teacher when you're doing a review for a test, and the teacher keeps stomping the de- stomping on the floor, saying, "Hey, this is gonna be on the test." We kind of feel that way with these issues, but buy what you like. Absolutely. And then coming in at that number three spot, we talked about some Jack Kirby goodness earlier on in the list, but we're talking about it again 
and we got Demon Number One. This is another book that kind of got some heat a couple of years ago with the whole Constantine and the whole Justice League Dark, but it's kind of come back down, and it's always a great one no matter what time to add to your collection. No, throw option news out, throw everything else out. Jack Kirby and a great story, and it's got some great first appearance as well, right? Right, and that's the great backup for this because you uh, it's similar to Commandy where no matter what happens with the property, it, it, these are great classic DC Comics books to own. But Justice League Dark is coming to HBO Max. Bad Robot, J.J. Abrams. There's going to be money behind it. It's going to be amazing. I have full confidence in it. And everybody is circling the wagon looking for those characters of first appearance who's going to show up. The Demon is certainly one who has added a lot of flavor to the Justice League Dark and is one of those ones to be paying attention to. And this is a book that is found regularly uh, in those kind of short boxes. We talk about you got those dollar bins. You got the short boxes on the table with those kind of keys, but they're not wall books. And then you got those wall books. This is that short box on the table type book. You find them for $5 in mid-grade. You find them in 20 to 60 dollars in that that higher type grade when we're talking raw but the no matter what grade you're talking about i think this is a good buy i'm real bullish on justice league dark i like what dc can do with hbo max and like you mentioned you got that blue chip backup the fact that this is some kirby goodness that's always going to be relevant in the hobby Coming in at the number two spot, we've talked about Black Adam before, but here we have that Black Adam, the Dark Age, that whole miniseries. We talk about stuff in sets all the time on this channel. We think issues one through six right now is primed to be added to your collection. Yeah, a lot of people pay attention to number one because it's got that nice, sexy number one right there, right? Sleek, slim. It's real easy on the eyes, and it's the book that kind of gets everybody's attention. And certainly that one in 10 Alex Ross incentive for number one, that's a mega key because you look at that book as a variant. There it's really like the first big major artist on a Black Adam variant. So I think that's always going to be a book of importance. But talk about a lot of reader buzz on this channel as well, Brian. And this story right here is really the first modern story we get of Black Adam. Um, you know, coming off of his appearance with the JSA and Jeff Johns kind of bringing him into the modern DC universe and this kind of miniseries. If you look at what happened from the JSA run, all the way through the new 52, Jeff Johns made Black Adam an important part of the DC universe. And this is kind of like part of that. And I think going forward, when we see Black Adam played by The Rock, I think Dwayne Johnson playing Black Adam is quite possibly the most marketable thing in comics. And people still are sleeping on Black Adam. And there's just not a lot of spec plays when it comes to this character. His first appearance is really not a book to pay attention to. It's golden age. It's, it's astronomically expensive people are chasing that first silver age book they're chasing the first time he fights superman they're chasing a lot of various different books but this is a modern age series that really tells his solo story and it's important to remember that black adam movie is a solo movie i think this is one to pay attention to this is a set you can pick up regularly right now for about twenty dollars for these six issues if you buy these issues individually you can find them in dollar bins you certainly can find them for cover price each, but I think this has 60 to $75 potential when we're talking about this movie. And then hitting us at that top spot, the number one spot this week, we got DC Presents number 49. A lot of stuff that Jack just talked about for the number two pick, I think fits right in here at the number one pick, but I'll even take it a step further. He mentioned Black Adam's going to be a solo movie. I think you pick this up now. This sets you up past that solo movie because we've got no news has been mentioned about black adam and superman here you're going to get black adam superman and shazam i think this could tie into a potential storyline for that movie beyond that solo black adam movie yeah i hinted at this book when we were talking about the last issue and here's the thing we've heard so many rumors that not only has Dwayne the rock johnson become one of the biggest actors in hollywood but he's also one of the biggest power players and he has become very important at Warner Brothers to the future of DC Comics. And he has said, do not cancel my shared universe and give me Henry Cavill as Superman. That's what he wants. So it looks like that's what we're going to get. We're going to get Shazam. We're going to get Superman. And we're going to get Black Adam all facing off. We're going to get the JSA. Uh, looks like we may get the Legion of Doom. All of these types of things are in play. And I think that this is a book 
again, because there's no real first appearance to chase and people are choosing to chase that first Silver Age appearance, this is a book that could be the book. I don't know. But either way, it's certainly going to be a book that people are paying attention to. And like you said, it's not one of those burn and turn one times because this is going to be a book that's relevant for the Black Adam solo movie, could be a book that's relevant for Superman solo movie, could be a book that's relevant for Shazam solo movie. It could be a book that we're talking about for a number of years going forward. So this is a book to grab right now. This is a book to hold on to for the future. And that's why it holds the top spot this week. Yeah, it holds the top spot. And there you have it, guys. Those are 10 more top 10 back issues for you to be on the lookout for. Add them to that master list that we've been providing you each and every week. And be on that lookout because in just a couple more weeks, we are going to release volume two of those 100 plus back issues to add to your collection, right? That's right. Available on SimplemansComics.com. We've got volume one there right now for $1.95. But while you're on SimplemansComics.com, be sure to check out our brand new exclusive variant for Seven Secrets Number One with heavyweight cover artist Jung Young Yoon doing that virgin cover, limited to 500 copies, and available on SimplemansComics.com as well as the 616Comics.com. And with that being said, guys, this is Brian Jack with Simplemans Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video. Yeah, no, I'm studying like a milli rocket. Skin clear, still look young, Andy Miller knockers. Money in my pocket. Don't call me a money pocket, engine get to rocket. It sound like a thunder rocket. Yeah, I still love my baby even when it's toxic. Crazy like she Britney, but no, she don't shade the knock. Russell Wilson, where I get long, stay in the pocket.